The following coverage of the International Livestock Congress of the Calgary Stampede is brought to you by Haney Farms, your canola, corn, and cereal seed experts. Check them out at HaneyFarms.com. Okay, we're here on RealAgriculture.com today with uh, Earl Geddes. Earl is the Vice President of Farmer Service with the Canadian Wheat Board. Uh, he's based out of Winnipeg. Hey, Welcome, guys. Earl. Thank you. It's great to be here. Carol, let's talk a little bit about the uh, the Canadian Wheat Board. Uh, let's start off talking about, um, I think it's a great idea to talk about some of the p new programs or innovations that the Wheat Board is working on to better serve uh, the Western Canadian farmer. Sure, we can, we can start there and it can take us all over the place. We've got uh, a number of different areas we could look at. So let's start with the marketing. That's our job is to market grain. Uh, we've got a floor full of people in Winnipeg on the sixth floor of the eight. Uh, sixth floor of the Canadian Wheat Board building now, that whose job it is is to first of all travel to countries and understand what consumers want, look at the products they're using, and then go and market to them. Uh, the innovation pieces come in some of the marketing packages we put together, but also in the products that we take them. For example, uh, working with the Canadian International Grains Institute, we've developed a whole new use for Durham wheat out of Western Canada, which is principally just for couscous and pasta and a wee bit of bread, but using it for yellow alkaline noodles in Southeast Asia, which is potentially a tremendous market, a whole new market world for Durham out of Western Canada. So we're right now visiting customers in Southeast Asia, showing them how to use Durham flour in the production of salty uh, yellow alkaline noodles rather than spring wheat flour, which they're getting largely from Australia. So very, very innovative approach to that. We're working with a company called uh, McDonald's in Europe, <laughs> McDonald's Agricultural Marketing Plan. So they've got criteria around how grain is produced and working with fresh start bakeries out of Spain. Uh, we've now we're supplying the wheat for 50% of the McDonald's buns in, the, in Europe, whereas before we started into this project with them, we weren't selling any wheat to the uh, McDonald's bun business in Europe. The game is to get it all and then to move on to pizza. So very innovative marketing approaches in, the, in that range. In terms of uh, how we're helping farmers manage their businesses, uh, we've started a number of years ago offering risk management programs like the fixed price contract, the basis price contract, early payment options. These are working and are giving farmers a bit more flexibility in when they price their grain or when they get their cash flow, but it's not good enough yet. Uh, I've personally been in the, involved in meeting with some of our largest farmers in Western Canada, so guys that are 15 to 20 to 30,000 acres saying, how can we improve our relationship in terms of the service we provide you or, or the support you need for your business uh, from the Canadian Wheat Board? Getting some very interesting comments, largely around movement, price stability, and ability to forecast out more than one year what I might get for my wheat. And so always looking at different risk management tools for farmers. We've changed our risk management policy ourselves for how we manage our pricing options so we can hopefully simplify them a wee bit and streamline them so that they actually meet that particular need. So, so do, you, do you find that, and this maybe is the wrong, this is an assumption, but that smaller farms are, are pooling and larger farms are using some of the more uh, like fixed price and stuff like that? or? Or how does that, does that demographic break down at all? It, it does, like we'll see in our uh, Farmer Satisfaction Index or it's a survey we do to see where do we need to be focusing our efforts, that farmers over 2,500 acres of farms tend to be using the payment options more than the farmers smaller than 2,500 acres. The larger the farmers, the more involvement they are because they're looking for uh, a different business model, more predictive pricing, more st stability in their cash flow. And, and opportunities to go along with that. But there are a lot of farmers that are smaller scale farmers that will contract 100 tons of wheat on a fixed price contract and just because they can and just because they know what the price is going to yeah. be. So it, it runs the full gamut. We see the complexity in the programs being different. The age groups are different. Yeah, that was my next question. How does the age demographic break The younger demographic tends to use the pricing options more than the older demographic and the younger demographic tends to use our e-services more than the older demographic. So, so those farmers under 45 are using our e-service so they can go online, do their permit application, their contract applications, their fixed price, basis price contracts right online rather than going through an elevator or other, mm -hmm. other service providers in the country. Whereas those farmers that are 55 plus tend to be more 
human resource related, so they want to have a contact with a person. So they're dealing with their elevator managers or one of our farm business reps. Okay. But we provide that, that variation in service because that's what farm community is looking for. So one of the things I wanted to ask you is that um, the, the wheat board being sing, a single death seller of, of uh, coarse grains, right. um, it, it doesn't manage the amount of acres that are grown. It, it basically manages the marketing component of what, what does get grown. And you right. provide recommendations or um, outlooks or you, know, you may want to decrease the amount of acres of Durham this year on your farm or because this is what we see with pricing. With a crop like Durham, which is very small globally, but Canada is a big producer, why is there not that kind of step towards you having a more direct handle on this is how many acres would be should be produced this year? Right. So, so great, great question. I mean, Durham, as you suggest, and it's a good, good one to talk about. Durham, we're about fifty-five percent, sixty percent of the world trade in Durham from a small group of farmers in Western Canada, from a very tight region in Western Canada, that. In fact, if you could manage the supply in that, you could likely manage the price even more than we're able to do now. But that's not our mandate. Right. Our mandate is you as a farmer are growing Durham, you grow as much as you want, our job is to sell it. Okay. We, we give a pool return outlook signal at the beginning of the year and throughout the year saying, you know, this is what we see with an average crop, the price of Durham being in the next crop year, so it's a bit of a price signal. The difficulty with Durham is that a small marketplace, six and a half million metric tons, production goes up a million tons or down a million tons, has a dramatic impact on what the ending price of Durham is going to be. Very difficult to predict that. Mm. But we should need to be really clear, the Canadian Wheat Board's job is to market, not to manage the farm. Right. The, the, it's your job to make the decision as a farmer, does that price look good enough to me to grow Durham in my farm? Mm -hmm. And if it does, then that's what I should grow. What we need to do in Durham and what we're working hard to try and develop are some pricing options that are meaningful as the pricing options in spring wheat are. But again, because there's no Durham trade any, anywhere in, a, in an exchange globally, there's no pricing mechanism to offset that risk on. So it's much more difficult for us to manage that process. So how do you see the future of the Canadian Wheat Board? Like, you know, where is it? Obviously, a lot has changed. We have a lot of the options and different things that a farmer can do on his farm. Where do you where do you kind of see the next the next step? You know, the, not just the change, but the next step right. step in the approach. I, I think you know, as we discussed this morning, we we're talking mostly about beef with mm -hmm. global demographics. A lot of that that same scenario plays out for wheat and wheat products globally. There's a great capacity globally to grow cereal grains. The capacity to grow a high quality, high protein cereal grain, wheat or durum or, or lower quality barley, uh, lower protein barley, sorry, aren't as great as they are in the great northern plains, so northern US and, and western Canada. We have a, a system in western Canada that is, the wheat board is the marketing part of the system, but the quality control on our plant breeding, the quality control on our grading and our export program position Western Canadian wheat and Durham farmers especially to provide product into the higher value markets as they grow around the world. Mm -hmm. The most profits in the high value markets. Anybody can sell grain to Iran, anybody can sell grain into markets where, where it's really a price market. You just bid lower than the next guy and you get the marketplace. Mm -hmm. Where I see the Canadian wheat board and, and the Western Canadian farmers growing in the future is on that quality profile side, on the food safety profile side, on the ability to anticipate what a country's gonna want 10 years out so that you can have that product ready. That's what Western Canadian farmers gain by working together in terms of positioning set themselves properly for a marketplace. I think the wheat board does that well. I would be concerned that if Western Canadian farmers decide they don't want the wheat board anymore, that we'll start to see a lot more about an American approach to marketing where there's an exchange in Minneapolis that sets the price and that's the pricing. Eh? You mm -hmm. can't differentiate between Japan, between Malaysia, between Thailand. So you lose those really quality value opportunities that are there in the pricing of grain.